And welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, November 26, 2024. And I'd appreciate if you turn off your cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, will you please do the roll call? Yes, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Ms. Callen Carson? Here. Mr. Carey? Present. Mrs. De Roberts? Here. Ms. Hernandez Williams? Here. Mr. Riley? Here. Ms. Walters? Present. Mr. Weiner? Here. Vice Chair, Mr. Lacavoli? Here. Board Chair, Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Angelica Data? Here. All present. Thank you. And can I have Jim Sutton tonight? He's Superman. Come on up and lead us in the <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Superman. <laughs> Okay, we have we do not have student and staff recognition tonight, so we'll go right on to our next item. On tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on November 12, 2024. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. A second? Second. And a discussion on them. I think we have. Y yes, on page six. I'm not sure if the information wasn't, but Ms. Granato, motion to leave executive session, Mr. Weiner second, all in favor, and then there should be a motion to adjourn the meeting by Ms. Granato, and I believe I seconded that motion, and then we all vote in favor. Right. I believe I seconded okay. it, yes, I'm generally Great. the one. thank you for that information. Yeah, no problem. That's all for me. Okay, anybody else for that meeting? Okay, so may I have a motion to approve the minutes as, as amended? So moved, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. And we also on tonight's agenda have the approval of the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on November 19th, 2024. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Okay, a second. Second. Any discussion? I have one change I noticed on page four um, in the presentation with Michael Scott. He said that the minutes say that he said re reimbursement rates for higher, or I'm sorry, for new builds was higher. Um, I'm sorry, reimbursement rates for renovations was higher, and that's not correct. It's for new builds that's, that's uh, higher. So I think that was just a, a mistake in the minutes. So the, so the rate for new build is higher? Higher. Higher reimbursement. No, no. It's the other no. way around. The other way around. Reimbursement rate for a new renovation. renovation. You're right, it's lower. Yeah, I, I just lower. Got a, I got like a migraine. <laughs> and right now. here it says it's higher. So the problem is it's lower for right. new new yeah, yeah. construction yeah. than renovation. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So the, it should be lower. If, if you keep the sentence as is, the higher becomes a lower. Got it. Yeah, just mm. change that one word. Sorry. <laughs> Figured it. Okay. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Are there any others? Um, okay, so I make them. I, well, I do. Go ahead. Um, under conclusions and takeaways, the last bullet, building on Keisha Farm property is not likely to be viewed as a next step in this process. I didn't get the feeling that that was decided at that meeting or communicated. I thought it was, um, I thought I heard Michael Scott say that uh, building on Keisha, it would actually be a great location for our school and that due to the community being unsettled, about Keisha Farm, it's not something they had explored, but it was recommended. I don't. I didn't walk away from the meeting and think that it would no longer be looked at. Now, I think that's. I, I, I think that's that's an accurate description. It, it was brought up as a possible choice. I know but ultimately he didn't the decision like... it was not made at that meeting. So maybe amend it to state that. Okay. I do remember there was no infrastructure. That was another piece that he talked about. Yeah. Okay, you think we're okay on that? Yes. Okay. So I make a motion that we approve these minutes as corrected. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 
those minutes are approved. Now, is there anyone in our audience who would like to come up and make a comment? Come on up and state your name and address, and may I remind you that you have five minutes. Okay. Mr. Emmett, you do have some communications to share. I do have some communications. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a few items this evening uh, on the uh, building <coughs> front. Just want to make sure that everybody in the community is aware. I know our Emerson Williams parents and staff are already aware, but we have a uh, situation over at Emerson Williams involving our fire suppression system. Uh, we have a leak. Uh, the leak is underground. Uh, they are working to locate where that leak is. Um, over the course of this past Saturday, they spent the better part of the day trying to find the leak. Um, they have not found it yet. Um, however, they are going to make another try at it tomorrow. With tomorrow being a school day, albeit a minimum day, we are going to have to make some adjustments with the bus drop off. So that communication went out. Uh, through Ms. Decor. In addition to that, we'll have uh, police there to help direct traffic. We will have physical services staff there. Mr. Barabalt will be there, myself. Uh, I'm sure Mrs. Destoli will be over there as well, um, just to ensure that uh, everything is good with drop-off. Drop-off actually is going to be into the cafeteria tomorrow instead of the main entrance. So the hope tomorrow is that they will be able to locate the leak and, and isolate it and repair it. Uh, during the time where this fire suppression system is down, the fire alarm system is fully operational. And for the past two days, we have had a fire watch. And the fire watch is when the fire marshal will actually assign a member of the Wethersfield Fire Department to be in the building to monitor. So um, today and yesterday, as well as tomorrow, we will uh, have a fireman or firewoman in the building just to monitor. Um, and again, for us, if there was any type of an emergency, we have an evacuation plan. We have a process that we go through. That's why we do the drills. So the hope is that they will identify the leak tomorrow. They will be able to repair it and we'll finish that off. We finally, uh, after multiple months, uh, got meaningful rain. And with meaningful rain came roof leaks. They're back again. Um, we had one at uh, Hanmer in a room where it is typical, a uh, second grade classroom that uh, Patrick Cohn pointed out to me. Uh, we also, much to my dismay, had a roof leak over at Highcrest. Um, Tremco was contacted, and um, right now at this point, we're trying to determine if the leak is where the new roof and the old roof come together. So I'll have more information for you once uh, I get word uh, from Juan Salazar and Physical Services Department. Um, we had the opportunity uh, last Wednesday to come together for the annual Superintendent's Award Ceremony. Um, it is wonderful as it is every year to be able to recognize our students our support staff members, as well as our wonderful parents. Um, they are um, what is great about this district. So congratulations, uh, Miss Angelica Data, a superintendent award winner herself, as well as Superman Sutton, who's uh, covering all of the uh, audio visual this evening. Again, one of our staff members. So um, I also wanna say a special thank you to all of our administrators. Uh, the administrative team um, kind of took over at the end and uh, did a uh, kind of a presentation for me. And uh, I'm not usually on the receiving end of that, but um, it was a very humbling event. And to sit, stand there and listen to our administrators talk about all the things we've done over the past 13 years and total 17 years in the district was um, very heartwarming. So again, thank you. Uh, I will tell you that the uh, Diet Coke was greatly appreciated along with the buffalo chicken. Uh, I will say that the broccoli was not well received, but that's okay. Um, I also want to let everybody know that uh, tomorrow evening um, we have a special event coming up over, over at the high school at Catone Field. Uh, the annual Thanksgiving football game between the Wethersfield Eagles and the Newington Nor'easters will take place tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Uh, we are anticipating a very large crowd for this game. Uh, Newington currently 9-0 uh, and 0, uh, in playoff contention in Class M, and your Wethersfield Eagles at 8-1. and 1. So... Uh, playoff implications for this one tomorrow. Uh, we're expecting uh, good weather. Uh, we have worked with the police department already as well as physical services to make sure that we have adequate staffing there. Um, we do expect a big crowd, so if you're planning on getting there, get there early. Um, and uh, again, if you're getting there in a vehicle, carpool if you can. 
um, and once the lots fill, they are going to close them off. So we're hopeful that it will be a fun event. It's always a great event uh, to be at Catone Field the night before Thanksgiving. Band will be there, dance team, cheerleaders, Newington's band will be there as well. So um, it promises to be a great event. So certainly hope to see you there uh, tomorrow night. And then last but not least, I just wanna let the community know, um, I just wanna say a um, healthy and happy Thanksgiving. Hard to believe that we are already on the cusp of Thanksgiving and the holiday season. But uh, again, a happy and healthy Thanksgiving to all of our families, staff, and students in Wethersfield. That's communications, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, and go Eagles. Um, tonight we do have one action item. Marjorie, would you read that for us? Um, action, um, that the Wethersfield Board of Ad shall approve the administration of the We Hope Parent Survey through the town. Okay, we'll have a motion, but can we have a second? Second. And we'll have some discussion, led, thank you. We have uh, Carissa Peckrell and Bonnie Smith. Um, Carissa works for the town. Uh, Bonnie is a statistician extraordinaire and has extensive experience with surveys. So can you just give us a brief overview. Good evening, Board of Ed Chair, um, members and superintendent. Uh, my name is Carissa Peckroll. I was recently hired as the prevention coordinator for the town of Wethersfield in social youth and senior services. Um, I'm also joined here tonight by Bonnie Smith, our drug-free community survey consultant. Um, the youth needs assessment survey was administered in November of 2023 to 7th through 12th graders at both Silas Dean Middle School and Wethersfield High School. As a follow-up to the youth survey, we're looking to conduct the adult community survey. Um, this would give us knowledge and perspective regarding substance use and at-risk behaviors within the town. And the data will best be used to guide future planning, provide prevention programs, and promote overall community awareness. So I'll turn it over to Bonnie, who will talk a little bit about the survey. Hi everyone, thanks for having me as always. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with Carissa who's really taken off in her new position, um, quite really with a lot of gusto I would say. Um, as part of what we do when we provide evaluation and survey services to folks who have the Drug Free Communities Grant, so my company works with Leathersfield of course but many others, is we like to implement an adult or parent community survey. And in talking with Erica and Carissa, Erica from um, Social and Youth Services, we determined that why not ask all adults, not just parents in the community, about their perceptions around mental health and substance use, um, including, I know you have a copy of the survey, but their perceptions of barriers and sort of facilitators to access care for youth and adults. So we're not really asking folks about their own behaviors or challenges with mental health and substance use, but what their perceptions are around youth and their youth challenges, and then just generally making sure they know how to get care um, and some other questions related to how we might alter implementation plans for the Drug-Free Communities Grant and use the data to apply for a second competitive round, which will need to occur in early 2025. So currently the town has a five-year drug-free communities grant through the CDC. That grant uh, will conclude at the end of next, I think September, mm -hmm. September, September 2025. Early in 2025, the town will have the opportunity to apply for another five years of funding, but having as much um, relevant data, we're not asking data just for data's sake, um, for that application process is key, and then also to help determine what strategies we might suggest within the application to be implemented if it should be awarded is really helpful. And we're able to take this adult community survey data and sort of triangulate it with the youth data and see how it compares. Um, I think our real ask is um, if it can be communicated through the schools. It, it's not something that youth will be accessing themselves. Um, it's just in the communities we work with, when the school is a partner in disseminating this survey electronically, we get better response rates. Um, I know that Erica and Carissa have other mechanisms in place to disseminate the survey in the community as well. Uh, so it won't be the only method of dissemination, but it will be one very important one should you approve it. Okay, any questions? Um, I just had a few comments. Um, one was, I know one question is about a medical drop drop box, and I know 
Is it the case now that the police do one once in a while, but there's not just an established one and other towns do have an established, like consistent one? Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so most surrounding communities do have a medication drop box for unwanted prescription and other over-the-counter medications, and the town of Wethersfield does not. So um, while youth services and the police have partnered in the past with the um, the take back, thank you, like the drop off day, the take back day, um, it's nice to, we wanted to get the perceptions of if the community would be wanting to have a drop box of their own like many neighboring communities. Right. Um, and I just wanted to say I appreciate the gambling uh, component to this because I know it's a much bigger issue that's growing and growing in mm -hmm. the state and everywhere that has a lot of legalized gambling. And I just know from my own kids telling me that it's a huge problem, even at the high school, mm -hmm. um, that because it's easy to get an app, it's easy to get your parents' credit cards. It's, it's just way, way worse of an issue than people think. And so it's a, it makes people think. I think when they see this survey, if it goes down, like they have to think about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I would say is like the list of barriers was so comprehensive, but it really made sense. Like I, I've really appreciated that would seem very well thought out. It is a long question, but I'm glad that you appreciate yeah. uh, the detail. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Liz? Oh. Sure. Oh. Hi. Uh -huh. I loved how the survey was written. I thought that it was an open, but yet guided enough to make it clear how people, what you're asking of people to answer. I thought I just, I really liked it. And um, I remember the data from last year. I loved how it was, you know, presented, analyzed, and, and brought back. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this, these results. Um, when you say communicate out to the community, so we have you know, our, our mechanisms, but what other um, tools or venues are you using to communicate? Like, because I know we have the town manager, you can send something out to that list who is, is on that list, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't hit as many people. What is your strategy for that? So Erica and, I, Erica and I have been working on um, presenting a newsletter for specifically the We Hope Coalition, which I think will be a wonderful way to kind of get the information out there about the prevention coordinator position and also what we can do for the town. Um, and so that would be one way is partnering with Scout Collective, who is a <coughs> marketing agency, to be able to do that um, and have individuals sign up for the newsletter. Um, and that survey would go out through there as well. Nice. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that um, this grant is is significant that we've gotten. I hope that we do get it the next time around. Um, and it was all grants are pretty heavy lifts, I think, but this one was just huge, just a huge lift. Um, all of you working together to get this done, to get the surveys developed, um, to get the the We Hope branding. Um, it's just really been amazing and I appreciate all the work that's gone into it. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful thing for our town. Hey, Michael. Yeah, I, I just, I, I echo uh, that and I think, you know, the partnership for us is critically important because we also use the data for grant opportunities as mm -hmm. well. Now I understand we did the Youth Voices Count Survey. That's going to be coming up again uh, in the fall. Ideally, yes. So okay. um, the the sort of guidelines or really requirements of the Drug Free Communities Grant is that you have an agreement um, to move forward every 24 years with the youth survey so that you can monitor the results of your efforts and then plan to address maybe any emerging efforts that may arise. So in an ideal situation, yeah. Okay, so it would behoove us then likely sometime in the spring to go for approval for that so that we're keyed in with we have the parent data and then we'll be getting the youth data again. Makes sense. Perfect. Okay, anyone else? Okay, we had a motion. It was second. We have discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? That motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, tonight we have a first read of proposed policy update. Matthew? Yes, so um, the Policy and Planning Committee met on Thursday, November 21st. Uh, all members were present. We discussed many updates that were brought to us from our legal, Shipman and Goodwin, 
18 updates in total from four different series. Some of the highlights of those updates were, we now have more autonomy to decide what to do with any year-end budget surplus, fingers crossed that we have one. Mm -hmm. Any student who is also a parent can now request Board of Ed permission to attend adult ed classes. Uh, Title IX non-discrimination procedures were made consistent across all series. There is a new age for Board of Eds to provide special education services to homeless youth. That age is now 22. Um, the maximum amount of consecutive days for an in-school suspension is moving from 10 to 5. And it's also moving from 10 to 5 for out-of-school suspensions for grades pre-K through 2. Additionally, the state of Connecticut, uh, the legislature decided to hold off on implementing legislation requiring high school graduates to complete the FAFSA. Policy updates concerning employee background checks, admission to schools prior to the age of five, and suicide prevention and intervention ultimately had no bearing in WPS since we already have their recommendations implemented or have stronger policies already in place. All of the policies discussed that evening were agreed upon and implemented by consensus, and they are now presented to you all for a first read. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on. So the next meeting we'll have, we will have the second reading and a motion to approve. All right, um, on to meetings held, student program and services. Janice, would you comment on that? All right, um, we started our meeting with an update from the uh, Wethersfield Transition Community uh, Academy, uh, WTA. Students at our academy are 18 to 23 years old and are learning life and work skills through hands-on experiences. Toward that goal, students have been making and selling dog treats. Kim Fitzner, program coordinator and teacher, along with WTA paraprofessional Renee Soderberg, reported that this year students have added um, greeting card creation, production, and selling. This addition provides opportunities for all students to be involved according to their interests and abilities and has brought out talents that many never knew they had. Card racks can be found in all of our schools as well as at central office and sell for $3 a piece. Students have learned how to keep an inventory of the number of cards for each occasion that are at each site. Um, proceeds go to buying more supplies and um, for educational and special outings and field trips, often with transition students from our neighboring towns. The academy staff and students would like to investigate the possibility of having their own storefront as a next step. We also received an update from teachers at the Web Integrated Preschool Program. They reported that enrollment this year is expected to exceed, exceed last year's um, 91 students with the expectation of class sizes of 18 by June, higher than their usual of 14 to 16. WEC and the <coughs> excuse me, TLC preschool program have identified students um, to be screened for services. Currently, there are seven active referrals um, and five additional referrals anticipated, which is a large number. Um, so it's good that they're being identified, um, but they are, as a result, experiencing a higher number of students requiring services, um, representing a 10% increase from last year. It was reported that families with special needs children um, sometimes move to Wethersfield for the quality of our services, um, which also adds to the growth of the program and the demands on it. Last but not least, the preschool staff informed us about equitable access to um, augmentative and Alternative Communication Devices, or AAC. Currently, there are 15 students who use these devices, and there are 17 more students who could benefit from them, but for whom it is not a requirement. It is expected that the 15 will grow to 28 this school year. These students need aids for expressive language in order to speak. Some of them are, not, are completely nonverbal. Traditionally, they and their teachers have been provided with picture cards um, in order to communicate. While this is helpful, it is very limiting and does not develop language to the sophisticated level of their peers, which is a drawback to learning. The AAC devices look like laptops and allow teachers and families 
um, in the students themselves to have more significant language interactions. The devices, the devices vocalize for the students. They are valuable, necessary tools that require significant training time for all those that will be using them. Um, so it cannot be stressed um, how much lengthy PD time is required for this. Um, they're expensive and are provided if there is an IEP, but as stated previously, there are many more students who would also benefit from AAC devices. <laughs> Thank you, Janice. Okay, we have a special Board of Ed meeting on um, November 19th, and the board met for a special meeting right here in the chambers on Tuesday, November 19th. TSKP, the consultant group for our elementary building project, gave a presentation on the research and information they have gathered up to this date. Presenter and architect Mike Scott gave information on the schedule, their community outreach, their website, and on information gathered to date. Mr. Scott first presented an information draft on maintain only, which carries a cost of $56.53 million for our elementary schools. This plan, in reality, is only a reset on maintenance items of the major systems in our elementary schools. Maintain only does not add any educational resources or programs to the schools, and as we are working for 21st century buildings for our 21st century curriculum to have our students prepared for their futures. He also talked about the opportunities and constraints for each school with the overall takeaways and scenarios. After a question and discussion period, the board directed TSKP to continue researching on the building plans, which does include two plans to create a 5-6 academy. The Board of Ed is in constant communication with the building committee and TSKP. Please check the Wethersfield Public School website for all information on Renovate Wethersfield Public School. Use this site to keep up in, on info and to ask questions. And I highly recommend watching the video of the TSKP presentation to the board that night. Thank you. All right, and then we have Wethersfield Early Childhood. That was their annual meeting. Um, I got arrived a little late because I stayed for our whole special board of education meeting. And when I got there, I saw that I had my choice of rooms to go to for different discussions um, with every um, age for the, of our children in, um, covered by each room. And um, I chose the birth to eight-year-old room, but there were other rooms that had different things, for, as I said, for different ages. Um, discussions about um, developing device-free activities to try to get the kids to do something more natural, things that we used to do. Um, and also some on how to manage, teaching them how to manage the, these devices responsibly. Um, in, our, in our group, we we're talking about different ways of um, that the community could allow children to get together to play more, to just be together and get grown-ups together so they can know each other, so they'll know where the kids, where the kids are playing, they know the families. Um, and just mainly, it was a really good discussion about what a community is and being role models for developing a community. Um, 50 plus people, uh, Sally Destoli said, had attended. Um, so it was a good turnout, and um, you know, when you think about how many people are in town, that might not seem like a lot, but to get them all together for something like this on one night is pretty good, and that those 50 people will hopefully spread the word and kind of change the environment of um, our, the way that we use uh, devices around our children and how we allow them to use them. Thank you very much, Janice. Okay, and we have um, Matt again for policy and planning. We won't make you say it two times. We'll just go right on to finance and operation. Hey, thank you, Bobby. Um, so the finance committee met prior to this meeting tonight. Uh, just a few bullet points from what we discussed. Um, our current year's budget is 64.9 million. Um, 
are we are currently one hundred and forty five thousand dollars or point two two percent under budget which is good news um, it was brought to our attention that we're spending more this year than anticipated on substitutes we have about a million dollars budgeted for them um, we might go over we are currently spending one hundred and fifty dollars more per day on subs than we were last year um, there's a decent amount of savings uh, year over year from last year's budget due to new hires uh, costing less than resignations and retirees salaries and we have a potential for a future reforecast that is even more under budget due to state excess cost reimbursements however we will likely be using that to pay for the raises that we have given to our secretaries paras clericals and tutors uh, bargaining unit that is has a contract that is likely to be ratified very soon um, we are going to be looking to set budget workshops soon um, I know it's only November but we do have to start thinking about that not only the budget but the entire process and who we're going to talk to and when we're when we're going to discuss it as a group so um, we're going to try to reach out to you all soon and try to get some of those on the books for January, February. Okay. Thank you, Matt. All right. We have meeting schedule. We have human resource um, on oh, December. We're already into December 2nd at 6 o'clock. Student program and services, um, December 3rd at 6 o'clock. And facilities and maintenance committee on December 4th at 6 o'clock. And is there anyone in our audience here who would like to come up and make a comment please state your name and address and may i remind you that you have five minutes okay thank you are there any board comments janice um i just wanted to mention i forgot to mention when i was talking about uh the WEC um last week um that it was centered around the book the anxious generation it was our culminating activity um, there had been a series of book club meetings. So, so I just want to make sure to say that. <laughs> That's a thank you. Matt? Um, la last week, I believe it was last week, one, two weeks ago, I attended the superintendent's award ceremony. Um, it was an awesome evening. A lot of times being on the Board of Education starts to feel like a job, and you rarely get to see the fruits of your labor but it was just really tremendous um, seeing all of the students and the employees and the parents get recognized. Um, I left that evening feeling the way that I leave graduations. Um, I was hopeful, yeah, I left hopeful, happy, in a good mood, and it was nice to see Michael got recognized as well. So it was a good evening. Thank you. Anyone else for closing comments? Audrey? Yeah, I, I also attended the WEC um, annual meeting, and I was in a group that discussed and I've helped facilitate um, the issue of trying to reduce screen time for ages nine to 18. Um, and what was interesting about our group was that we were just so diverse and there was um, the, the head of the Chamber of Commerce for our town was in our group. The head of uh, Bike Walk, Weathersfield was in our group. It wasn't just parents or um, you know, administrators or, or teachers. It was, you know, a community effort I, I see forming. And I know uh, Kim Bobbin and uh, Jessica Coelho are, you know, definitely helped organize you know, the whole thing along with Sally Distoli. And, um, and it was just a really good event. And what I liked about it is that it's just the beginning in some ways. Um, I know they're going to compile a lot of the information we wrote down and the ideas and the discussions. We all had our, had, had our homework about writing it all down on a sheet of paper. Um, and compiling this information to bring forth more ideas or you know, continue the conversation, which is really what's important. And I think also getting more parents, more and more parents to read The Anxious Generation and also other community members, people who don't even have kids or kids who have grown, it's a, it's a book for everybody. It's not just a book about children. It's a book about how we wanna be as a community and, and help our youth and also ourselves maybe reduce our screen time and, and see the effects of screen time. So I would, I would again, recommend everyone read it. And I did actually go look to take out of the library, again, because I haven't bought my own copy, and I did see that it was not available. So I'm happy to see that out there's there. still more people out there, many people out there are taking it out. I could have gotten the e-version, but I don't want to do the e-version. <laughs> um, but um, just want to give kudos to, uh, to, to Kim and Jessica for, for helping organize that. 
um, organizing that um, meeting. It was very well, well attended, and it was just great to see all the different people come together. And um, that's it. Thank you. Liz? Hi. So I attended, I was able to attend the first half of the superintendent's awards, and I would like to congratulate Angelica Dida for one as uh, one of receiving the superintendent's award is one of the two Weathersfield High School students. Congratulations. <laughs> um, okay, I did, anyone else? I did oh, have, go, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Thank go you. Ahead. You know, I just had a few thoughts on um, the, uh, the building committee and the schools. Um, I would I, I would like to see something a little bit further on the options, meaning if the architect stands up in a special board of ed meeting and tells us that Highcrest North is a, Keisha Farm is a great spot for a school, it doesn't feel right to me that we're not asking them to look further into that. And, you know, I, I do recognize that there is, a, you know, some unsettlement within the community. Actually, not some. I think there's, there's enough. <laughs> um, but it just, we're hiring them to give us their best opinion. And I'd like to see them, you know, if they're telling us it's a great spot, I'd like to hear more from them on that rather than having them come in and we tell them specifically what we want, I'd like to also hear their pushback in terms of, you know, you might be thinking of this, but this would really be a benefit to the town. And I think I, I gathered just enough to let me think, you know, we should probably look into this. You know, if they're recommending it as a great spot, um, and I should go so far as to say recommending, but he did note it, Michael Scott, when he was up here, it's just something I'd, I'd like to, well, I, Hope that can be looked into further. Okay, thank you. I'll look into that. Anyone else for closing comments? Okay, I just want to make some comments on our um, Keen for Kids. So Keen for Kids had a virtual meeting on Thursday, November 6th, and I love all their information. At the halfway mark for the fall season, Keen After School had 864 enrollments, 423 unique participants, I don't know what that means, guys. And 31 scholarships have been provided to students. Um, social workers and ELL tutors have been instrumental in getting families registered and kids participating. So as we move into the second half of the fall session, the DJ mixing class is super popular, new Lego is popular, and the Connecticut Science Center classes have been well received. Hands-on science began in the school and is going really well. The musicals have been planned at each elementary schools. The co-directors for the Hartford Stage Productions have been hired. And speaking of our book, Caroline Ficino has developed a new program, Play and Create Club, as a product of the book Club Discussions from Anxious Generation. More info to come on this program as it begins. Encore has begun at the middle school and currently has 12 students registered and many activities are planned and the overall start is a good one. Class, our summer program was offered free to residents because of the grant funding provided by the Keene Foundation. They hope to continue this with additional grant funding. And the Keene Foundation's major funding source was a wonderful success this fall with three days of Indian summer weather, which brings the Cove Carnival their great profits. So thank you, Judy Keene, and your incredible foundation. Also, two other things here. The Board of Ed is working with our consulting group, CES, on the search for our new superintendent. We've begun creating eight to 10 focus groups for, the Jan for January virtual Zoom meetings for our townspeople to work with our consultant. The search will be in full mode in the new year and I will be reporting on it at each 2025 Board of Ed meeting. And my own, I would, as we gather for Thanksgiving, and I'm shocked too, we just said hello to everybody. I wanna take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to all who work for our schools. The season reminds me of the importance of being together and supporting and sharing commitments we have to our students and our schools. Together, we work so hard to create a nurturing and enriching environment for all. 
And so may this Thanksgiving bring you peace, joy, and time to reflect, reflect on the blessings in our lives. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right, and Angelica Data, our Superintendent Award recipient <laughs> from our high school. Will you fill us in on life at that flagship school? Yeah, so um, about two weeks ago on November 13th, about like 20 students along with teacher advisor Mr. Mosier and a couple more staff members helped out a Habitat for Humanity. And we had a goal of raising $800 to donate to Habitat for Humanity. And so Mr. Mosier agreed to like dye his hair blue. Like it was temporary dye, but we got to dye. It was really fun. Um, this past Friday, DECA um, held their last day of their annual Thanksgiving food drive. And some of the students along with Mrs. Riccardi were able to donate all of the food donations to the Weathersfield Food Bank. And the next day, last Saturday, we had our homecoming. It was really fun. Um, and then some things that are currently happening are with the blood drive, the winter blood drive, we're starting to recruit donors. And I know that for our spring musical, Hello Dolly, there are tryouts coming up, as well as for some of our like honor societies. For Spanish Honor Society, we're planning a culture night. And for National Honor Society, we're planning a chapter-wide fundraiser. So yeah. Okay, thank you. We're so proud of you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, is there any unfinished business tonight? I think we're all set. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Staining? Thank you and good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.